Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy, Mr. Fuckat. I hope everyone is doing well in this quarantine moment. Well, how did you do that? What were you doing? Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, so I'm about to react to a video, a very interesting video. Very, very interesting, at least in my opinion. And the video is, were there ever any black prophets? Throughout my childhood growing up, I never even had thought, like any thought that there were prophets from the black race. So we are about to find out if there were actually any prophets from the black race, anyway from the Islamic perspective. So let's dig in, enjoy. Were there black prophets from the ones that were mentioned to us? And we will find actually a few. One of them, historically speaking, is Suleiman alayhi salam. Suleiman is Solomon, by the way, for those that don't know Solomon, Suleiman. Suleiman alayhi salam is biblically described as having dark skin. Bani Israel, they had various. Bani Israel also, if I not mistaken, are the Israelites. Yeah, the Israelites. These colors, historically speaking, why? Because their origins were different. Some of them had Arab origins, some of them had some Egyptian origin, and so on and so forth. Rasulullah comes from the lineage of a black woman. Who Rasulullah, as he mentioned, is known as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the messenger of Islam. Yeah. Black woman. Who is that woman? Hajar Alayhi Salam. Musa Alayhi Salam. The man who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke to directly, Kalimullah, the man who the Qur'an speaks about more than any other human being in history, subhanAllah, Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet ﷺ did not just say that he was black. He said that Musa alayhi salam, when I saw him, he resembled the people of Az-Zut or Shanu'ah, the two darkest tribes amongst the Arabs. So the Prophet ﷺ said Musa alayhi salam had the blackest skin. He was not part of the problem with Hollywood imagery, like Musa alayhi salam does not look like Christian Bale. <laughs> All right, he doesn't look like, the, and even the older movie, The Ten Commandments, right? So Moses was black. Musa, Moses was a black man. And Hollywood has been lying to us all our lives. I guess I have to put my hat on now. Uh. The older movie, The Ten Commandments, right? There is no man, subhanAllah, that is praised more in the Qur'an and spoken about more in the Qur'an than him. So if you have a problem with people who have darker skin, you have a problem with Musa alayhi salam, then you have a serious problem with the Qur'an and you have a serious problem with faith altogether. Let me explain why he said so. First of all, to be a Muslim, a believer, you have to believe in God, the oneness of God, you have to believe in his messenger who is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to believe in the angels, you have to believe in all the prophets God sent. And Moses on his own, peace be upon him, is one of the strongest and the mightiest messengers of God. And if he is a black man and you have a problem with black people, then naturally you cannot be a believer. Now what I'm not saying is, I'm not saying that there are not racist people in Islam. But what I'm saying actually is that Islam does not tolerate racism. As should any other religion not tolerate it. So that, that's what I understand from what the statements he made before. Serious problem with faith altogether. So subhanAllah, how can a racist be a Muslim then? How can a racist be a believer? How can a racist say he loves the Quran? Now, the prophet who you have the most controversy about always in history is Jesus alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. His image has been politicized throughout history. Even the earliest days of Christianity after the Apostle Paul, the image that Jesus assumed depended on the culture that Paul uh, was reaching. To the Persians looked like Mithras, he looked exactly like their Persian gods. To the Romans, he looked like their Roman gods. To the Egyptians, he looked like the Egyptian gods. To the Indians, some of the Hindus actually said that Isa salam was an incarnation of the Lord Vishnu. So they portrayed him as a carnation of the Lord Vishnu. So this is a question because I don't know, obviously. Um, Indians believe in Jesus Christ? If you know, please get down to the comment section and let me know because I have no idea. I never thought they believe in Jesus Christ or any other prophet. Of the Lord Vishnu. What does Jesus, peace be upon him, look like? 
Interestingly enough, we find a disagreement amongst the Sahaba themselves. So we find a few ahadith. Uh, one of them is from Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this is an authentic hadith that the Prophet ﷺ says that while I was sleeping at the Kaaba, I saw a dark man who is the most handsome of dark men that you have ever seen. He's praising the beauty of Isa Islam. He said he had hair that was reaching to between his ears and his shoulders, like the most beautiful of hair that you've ever seen. He combed his hair and water was dripping from his hair and he was leaning on two men who were doing tawaf around the Kaaba. So I asked, I said, Man hadha, who is this? So they said, this is Al-Masih ibn Maryam. Then I saw a man with wiry hair and who was blind in his right eye as if it was a floating grape. And I said, who is this? And they said, this is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. This is the Antichrist. Now, this guy has very interesting videos on how, on who the Antichrist is, at least from the uh, Islamic perspective. It is very, very interesting. And if you guys like, I would actually make a video on that. So let me know in the comment section also, yeah, if you want to see that. From the Islamic perspective, his description, signs of him coming, and how people actually worship him in preparation for his coming. The Antichrist. Ibn Abbas anhu, though, he has a narration where the Prophet ﷺ says, I saw Musa, Isa, and Ibrahim السلام, and Isa السلام, was of a red complexion, curly hair and a broad chest. Musa السلام, was of a dark complexion, straight hair, and a tall stature as if he was of the people of Azut. Ibn Mas'ud's narration says that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the Al-Masih al-Dajjal in front of the people and he said, Allah is not one-eyed while al-Dajjal is blind in the right eye. Why? Because the Dajjal will claim to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Allah is not one-eyed. Al-Dajjal is blind in the right eye. And he said, his, his eye looks like a rotten grape. Then he said, وسلم, while I was sleeping near the Kaaba last night, I saw in my dream, فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ آدَمُ كَأَحْسَنِ مَا يُرَى مِنْ أَدَمُ The same thing that he said in the narration of Ibn Umar. There is another narration from Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, also in al-Bukhari, where he says, لَا وَاللَّهِ مَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ لِعِيسَى أَحْمَرُ He said, I swear by Allah that the Prophet ﷺ did not say that Isa alayhi salam had red skin. So Umar radiallahu anhu is attaching an oath to it. He said, وَلَكِنْ قَالْ بَيْنَمَا أَنَا نَائِمٌ أَتُوفُ بِالْكَعْبَةِ فَإِذَا رَجْلٌ آدَمْ And so on and so forth. Now the point of this is, number one, we should not dispute like the Christians do about the color of Isa alayhi salam because it doesn't matter. You have conflicting narrations. The stronger of them, obviously that Isa alayhi salam had dark skin, which would be more historically accurate, but it doesn't matter. That's the point here. It was a non-factor and it's part of the wisdom of not portraying the Prophet. Ibn al-Manzur, he says that Hajar, Musa, Isa, and Adam alayhi salam, because Adam means dark, actually in the Arabic language. That's how the Arabs used to describe someone with dark skin. The Sahaba did not care to ask much about this. And this is very significant because if you look at the companions of the Prophet sallam, they used to ask him about everything. But this was not a concern that they had. It simply did not matter to them. So we should not portray them and it should not become an issue to where it becomes politicized. Some of the other prophets that are mentioned in the Qur'an or figures, you have Dhul Qarnayn, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and Ibn Abbas, they both say that he was a black king. Now obviously Dhul Qarnayn is a controversial historical figure in and of itself because is he Alexander, is he Cyrus, Allahu alam. Again, it doesn't matter. The point being though, at this point now, because we know that there are prophets that Allah mentioned and there are prophets that Allah did not mention. The Prophet ﷺ says that there were 124,000 prophets. Authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad. Amongst them, 315 were messengers. Now, a teaser guys. What's the difference between a prophet and a messenger? If you know, get down to the comment section and let me know. Because maybe I know, maybe I don't. So you can imagine how many of them were of different languages, how many of them were of different races, what they must have looked like, where they were sent to. That would mean that there were African prophets, there were Indian prophets, there were Chinese prophets, there were pro prophets that were sent probably to the Americas way before, right, with the, with the ancient settlers of this land. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذَّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا 
We don't punish the people until we send them a messenger. A messenger from amongst themselves. I mean, that's only fair, right? It would be unfair for God to punish somebody, although he has every authority to, because he actually created us and he owns us. But he tells you that it is not fair for him to punish you for what you do not know. Genuinely, if he did not send a messenger to you or to your people, your kind, there's no way he's going to punish you. And this is only fair, I think. We have never sent a prophet except that he speaks the language of his people. That means a person who walked with them, spoke with them, a person that was just like them, a person that they could relate to. What is it with this prophet that walks in the marketplace, uses the restrooms, eats and so on and so forth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sending them to people all over the world in every language and in every color. One thing I really loved about uh, this video is the fact that uh, the narrator tells you that all this doesn't matter, the color of the skin of the prophet, and it shouldn't. Yeah, from for the people who were trying to portray with some authority that there were no black or there were no recorded black messengers or mighty people in the past in history, that this is not so. Islam makes you know that there is no place for racism in in the religion. There's a hadith or uh, the saying of the prophet where he mentioned that the black man is no better than the white man, nor is the white man better than the black man. Also, there's another hadith. It, it begins with "Innam uh, al-amal biniyat." What does not look at your actions necessarily, but what is in your heart, your intention. Your intention is more important. So, regardless of what, how you look, it is only humans that judge based on looks and the color of the skin. There's nothing like that in Islam. Again, I'm not saying that there are no, there's, there are no racist or racism in Islam in among Muslims. But Islam itself condemns that action. On that note, guys, let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. Um, was it educative? Was it helpful? Should I do more of this? And if you have any other video you want me to react to, please let me know. And I want to share a little fact from the narrator of this um, this amazing like lecture his name is Omar Suleiman he's an American scholar he's a very young man he was born in 1986 yeah according to Wikipedia and he's a scholar a civil rights activist a public speaker and a writer as well this is amazing you should you guys should totally check him out he's amazing his style of narration or style of giving lectures telling stories is really really amazing he has a very interesting also story on, on uh, uh, the, the angel uh, Jibril which is really amazing about three hours long and I actually watched the whole thing It's actually very very educative you guys should totally check him out and also guys do not forget to subscribe I will see you in another video. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Fucker. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing.